Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're going to love today's video because I'm going to go over a big update for SkyTrack, which was released on September 23rd, 2024. It's version 5.1. Now, before I get into this, if you like this video at any point, please hit that like button because if this video is not liked, it will not be shown to too many people. This would be the greatest honor that you could give to me. All right, let's get into this. So this is a great update. So they added course play a few months ago. Uh, I believe it was back at the end of June. And they said they were going to be doing some things by the fall. And that all happened. So they were definitely true to their word at SkyTrack. So let me pull up this graphic and I'll go over some of the details and then I'm gonna go into the program and show you exactly what they're talking about. There's some really great things in, in enhancements and it's gonna be available on much more devices than it was in the past. Okay, so this is directly from SkyTrack's website and I did highlight a few of these things in green that were very, very important to me. So again, this is from September 23rd, 2024. It's SkyTrack 5.1 release. Pinseeker is now available on Windows, iOS, Android, and Mac OS. Notice those systems that it is now available on. Compete in online closest to the pin tournaments to win fame, cash, and prizes. The SkyTrack app is now available on Mac OS, which is awesome. And check this out, course play which was just released a few months ago, comes out to all other platforms, iOS, Android, and Mac OS. Some other minor new features, which I think, quite frankly, are major. Hot keys have been added to course play. Press K while playing for an overview. I'll show you this. This is awesome, and I love this because I really wanted this. Graphics levels are now configurable in course play settings, you, like just like you can in GS Pro. Now, one thing I wanted to say about that is it also will check for you automatically and it will set the graphics based on your system. So that is a feature they put in there and you'll notice that, that that will probably happen to you. Even if you don't put it on auto, it'll check and it'll set the graphics for you maybe the first time. And then, uh, you know, with my system with the 3060 NVIDIA, it just set it for you know maximum graphics and it runs flawlessly never a glitch never a drop frame it never you know stalls you know the images are great in the software for course play and practice okay next is the configurable camera offset has been added to course play settings this will help a lot of people and then also four new green speed options have been added to course play's set matchup screen so what that means is that is the stimp that you're going to see like on GS Pro where you can set it, you know, anywhere you want. Typically in GS Pro, I set it like anywhere between 8 and 11 on the stimp. And then this has four different options that you can set it for, which I think is plenty. And they didn't have that before. And a lot of the people in the community in SkyTrack really wanted that feature, including myself, because it just was a little bit too slow on the putting and the putts would stall out unrealistically, well, that's fixed. Uh, next, aim controls using the keyboard have been added to all modes that support changing your aim. A plays like has been added to the yardage indicator for course play, taking into account height differences. This could be toggled from the indicator itself or from the course play settings screen. Updated UIs will be seen across bag mapping, wedge matrix, skills assessment, and challenge mode. Also bug fixes, they addressed an issue where vertical launch when putting was added on specific setups. This should be zeroed out now, making putting far more reliable moving forward. They addressed an issue where in some circumstances the camera offset was not retaining after the reboot of the system. And this was a big one for me. They addressed an issue where the ball did not always fall to the bottom of the hole on a made putt. So what it means by that is you would hit a putt and it would just stop at the top of the hole, would not drop down. And when they said that it didn't always, I never had my ball fall to the bottom of the cup, not even one time. It just sat there hovering. So they fixed that. They addressed an issue where rehit was not adding a stroke when taken. They addressed an issue where in some circumstances the UI would move in practice mode. They addressed an issue where links from the sign-in page did not take the user to the ideal location to create an account. And this was a big one for me as well. 
they addressed an issue where the T height, they said T high, but it should be T height on par threes could be comically tall. So essentially they had the T height at the height that you would hit a driver. And it just was weird. So obviously nobody's gonna hit, you know, any iron off of a T that's three inches in the air. So they fixed that as well. So I'm gonna go into the software right now. I'm gonna show you some of these things and wait till you see some of this stuff. Like the hotkeys menu just looks awesome. There was a lot of thought put into this thing. I'm basically going to print it out and put a screen protector over it and put it at my stand for my golf simulator so I can get used to that. It's kind of hard to remember. I do use a control box for GS Pro. I tried to program SkyTrack with it now that they've added the hotkeys, but I still wasn't quite able to get it all working. I'm gonna work on that a little bit more, but uh, I'd love to be able to use a control box, but at least they have the hotkeys now, so you can use a wireless keyboard, take it over to your station, wherever you're hitting from or whatever. Uh, you can still use the mouse. So let's go over to the software and I'll go over some of the things that are improved. All right, first thing, um, they did bring up Pinseeker. I'm not gonna open this up because I have not set this up yet. And basically you can compete in online closest to pin tournaments to win cash and prizes. Let's go over to course play. And we'll just pull up Le Golf National and play now. And as you notice there, uh, SkyTrack is very responsive. It loads everything very quickly. So let's hit next. And I'll just click on full 18. Next. So mulligans. Actually, you know what? Let's go back. And I'll just do one par four and one par three. You'll see why in a minute. So let's hit next. They still haven't changed game mode, so you're not going to be able to play scramble or anything like that yet. So just stroke play only. Uh, you know, you can, of course, set up your putting here and your gimmies, whatever you want to do. But here's the big thing, the green speed over on the right here. And I've got it set for normal, and I'm going to test it going forward. So far, that's worked out okay. So you can also do fast, lightning, and slow. So that's really important and essentially that changes your green stimp or your speed of your putts. Let's go next here. We'll just leave it on the tees right there. I'm Captain Fancy. We'll tee off. So the first thing you're gonna see here after this loads up is the normal tee height for like a par four or five. You're gonna see it's up there about three inches or so. Now, before I move forward, let's look at something they changed. So graphics levels. So you can go down to the bottom here and you can change your graphics level. Mine is at maximum because I can run the software at max. They also have auto detect, low, medium low, medium, high, and maximum. So lots of options there. And then here's where you adjust your camera offset up here. Okay, let's close this. Now let's go over to the next hole and I'll show you what the new T height is for a par three. As you can see, it's much lower more realistic, maybe like a half inch off the ground, which is, you know, probably is maximum you'd ever want a tee on a par three. All right, so the next thing is gonna be hotkeys. So to access the hotkeys menu, you're gonna hit the K key on your keyboard. And look at this, this is your course play keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet. These hotkeys were not available until this update. And this was much needed because all you can do is use the mouse this is absolutely incredible. Look at the layout in this thing, how well they put this thing together. One thing I wanna make note of that I noticed, and I haven't used this yet, but that orange key that says Mulligan on the M, apparently you have to actually hold that key down to make that work. And I haven't tested it yet, you can't just hit the key, which is fine. But I'm just gonna snip this and put it into a JPEG or PNG file, and then print it and put it in a sheet protector and put it at my golf sim station. So to get out of that, you can just click anywhere uh, off of it and you're back to the course. All right, so that's gonna be about it for the course play, new options that are released in this new update. 
And it really is much better than what they did three months ago, adding those things like the hotkeys, like the T height, like the putting to adjust that, the graphics levels. Uh, there's a lot of things that really improve this. And there's 31 courses currently for course play, and they're gonna grow that and grow it and grow it. They're adding every month, they're adding new practice ranges. I know there's a new one coming soon and a big one coming in October. They've got like two dozen of these things already worked out and they're just gonna release them like every month, apparently according to Golf Tech, what I saw. So that's gonna be about it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's content, hit that like button, share it with any of your friends that may be interested in SkyTrack or just golf simulation in general because that's what my channel is all about. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.